research on the explorations class, which is called change agents. In this project, we want to find the change agents uh, that have changed the world or changed their countries, whether it's Cambodia or Morocco. So after we find the change agent by sending them a request or the calling, then we Nice to meet you sometime. I'm uh, available and ready for the interview. Yeah. So, the first question is, how did you come up with this idea from Okay, so I have to say, I wish I could say it was my idea, but it was, in fact, a project of an NGO. There was two NGOs that uh, were working on uh, environment, actually one NGO especially working on environment and uh, avoiding deforestation. And their main project was on uh, uh, creating more efficient cooking fuels, uh, cooking stoves, cook stoves. You know that uh, in Cambodia many people still use wood and charcoal for cooking. And if you have an improved and more efficient cooking stove, cook stove, and they, these cook soap could save about 30% of the fuel, the charcoal, so by using less, they could avoid deforestation. The idea was to make not just an efficient cook stove, but also an environmental friendly fuel. And so they came up with the idea of making a charcoal from something that was not necessarily wood or from recycled material. And uh, they this project started in 2008 and the production started then in 2010. The factory was ready to start production. So, the second one is what problem did you have with this business and how did you uh, overcome them or what is the encouragement that keeps you going? Okay, so that's a uh, very so as I've just said, that it was first an NGO project. They started in 2010, and in 2011, actually, it was almost closing already. It was ready to close. It was bankrupt. Uh, they, I think the NGO had a brilliant idea, uh, but they didn't have the skill and capacity and experience to manage a business, and uh, so they hired me first in 2010 to make a project evaluation. I told them what I think was uh, they should do, what I thought they should do, but it was not really working. So when they told me in 2011 that they wanted to close it, because it was not financially sustainable and was losing money, I decided to take over the business and to uh, give it a try. So in two, from 2012, the, I took over as GFE and the, the barriers to overcome is that, that to make it financially sustainable which was meaning to produce charcoal and sell it at a competitive price with traditional charcoal and make a profit and the problem is that the traditional charcoal in Cambodia is very very cheap and uh, there's a lot of it and the people that produce it they are very poor so they don't make much money they cut the forest for free they transform it into charcoal then they bring it to the market so to make something in a factory was a challenge to make something sustainable that still would be uh, competitive in price because the Cambodian people our customers also there was a problem is that they don't care that the charcoal is environmental friendly. For them, the most important is that the charcoal is good quality and that it's cheap. So our pro problem was uh, to make the charcoal, good quality charcoal, at a competitive price and to keep our costs down. And to do this, I think you can see we have tried to uh, you saw the factory and we have a very efficient and industrial uh, production large scale so we can save on a, using something called economies of scale means uh, you save by going big 
and uh, yeah, and now it's 2016, so it's uh, almost five years that I took over the factory, and the factory starts making profit, and as you saw, also it grew uh, in the last few years. What is unique about this business? Uh, it's hard to say for, for me. Actually, I would uh, prefer other people tell me what they think is unique. I think what makes me proud about this business is uh, that we have a... Uh, for me, the, the, the thing about this business, I think one of your questions uh, also mentions it. Uh, for me, the uh, motivation of being an entrepreneur is not just making a company and making money, but I like it with my work to do something that is meaningful and that can uh, create value not only for me, but for my customers, for my employees, for my workers. And uh, careful, I'm not saying to be an NGO, I'm actually very proud that I'm, it's an enterprise, it's a company. And uh, I think that even social enterprises, how we are defined, they should uh, put their attention on business, be first a business to be sustainable, but then to do a business as good as you can to like uh, maximize your value. And when the people ask me, why did you choose to make a social business? I didn't choose to, so I try to make a business but I run my business in a way that I would run all other business. I don't like to, I think it's very bad to pollute the environment. So if I can do something, even if I was producing Coca-Cola, I would try to make Coca-Cola without having to destroy the environment around me. And about employing the people, I would try still to pay them good salaries and uh, good working condition and safety. It's not only in this factory. I think every entrepreneur should try to do that. And uh, the product that I produce for my customers, I don't want it to be uh, bad for their health or dangerous or hazardous or bad for the environment, as we said. So I try to make a product which is better than what uh, is available on the market. So this is, I think, unique of SJP that we were able to do something that people usually um, uh, think of NGOs for, like when you talk about environment and social, but actually we are a business, so that makes me quite proud. Can you list just some points, some great points that your country has If one point or a few points, few points the main one that, that we help the, the world. So, first of all, I think is uh, and uh, the most principal one is avoid the deforestation. We actually even won some international awards uh, about uh, for avoiding deforestation because in Cambodia the traditional charcoal still comes from illegal logging. And uh, every ton of our charcoal can save one ton of traditional charcoal that is not used. And to make one ton of traditional charcoal, you need 6.5 ton of wood. So first of all, we save the forest in Cambodia, which means we save the nature and the wildlife and the animals that live in the forest. Second, so this is the impact for Cambodia, but for the world, probably you have heard about climate change. The forests, they help absorbing CO2 emissions, CO2. So if we cut the forest, there's more CO2 in the atmosphere and we, the, we have what is called climate change, global warming. By saving the forest in Cambodia, we don't only have the impact in Cambodia, but we have the impact everywhere in the world. Because it's not that climate change only stays on top of one country. It's called global warming. So by we save the forests in Cambodia, but we reduce climate change everywhere in the world. And third, which uh, is very important for me, is, uh, is the social impact. I'm very proud that we can provide safe and uh, 
provide stable jobs for people that before never had a job before, so to waste pickers, and that we can provide a healthier product to our customers. Because I don't know if you heard it before, but our charcoal has less smoke emissions, which means it's a safer product for the end user. So save the forest in Cambodia, save the world from climate change, save the world. We do our small part about it, and we do our small part about providing jobs to people and give them a healthy product. Yeah.